But I do want to talk to you about the typology in the scriptures, beginning with Daniel, who was pre-furnace, if I can say it that way. Now look at the parallels here, okay? You have Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, they are a picture of the uh, Jews, whereas Daniel is a picture of the church. Here's why and here's how. This takes place in Babylon. There are two last days Babylons, uh, Revelation chapter 17 and chapter 18. One is an economic Babylon, one's an ecclesiastical Babylon or a religious Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar makes an image. The Antichrist will make an image. The measurements of Nebuchadnezzar's image are six cubits high by six cubits wide with six instruments that are listed there and the number of the name of the man, the Antichrist in Revelation 13 is to be counted and it too will add up to six Six, six. The six instruments are played, then they are to worship the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Lucifer was the angel of music, and music will play a role in the worship of the image of the beast. All the rulers of every nation and tongue are united together in one religion in ancient Babylon. All the world will come together and be united under a one world religion in the new Babylon. Three Jews refuse to worship the image of gold. The Jews will reject the worship of the image of the Antichrist in the tribulation when he sets up his image and demands to be worshipped in the newly rebuilt temple. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go into the fiery furnace just as Israel will go into the fiery hot tribulation. The furnace is turned up seven times hotter. The tribulation lasts for seven years. An angel like the Son of God protects them in the fire. Jesus, the Son of God, will protect them, the Jews, in the tribulation. After rejecting the false worship, they see their true and living God. So too will the Jew in the tribulation, after rejecting the worship of the Antichrist, accept the true and living Christ, their Messiah. Messiah. Right before all of this, Daniel was placed up in a high position by the king. He's conspicuously absent from the whole furnace thing. Right before all of this happens, we will be caught up to our high position with our king. Daniel was lavished with many gifts. We are lavished again with many gifts. Daniel was put in charge and reigned over the entire province as a ruler. We will rule and reign with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Again, we as the bride rule and reign with him during the millennium. Daniel remained in the royal court. We as the bride will remain in his royal court seated with him on the throne. So Daniel was pre-furnace. Enoch was pre-flood. Look at the typology here. As in the days of Noah, so too will it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. You have Enoch, a picture of the church, and you have Noah and his family, a picture of the Jews. The wickedness of man was great on the earth, Genesis 6-5. We are certainly in a time of great wickedness on the earth, and it's waxing worse. Very few people were following God's ways, we're told. So too, in our day, the gate is narrow and very few people are walking with the Lord. God warned his people. God is warning his people today. They didn't understand that judgment was coming upon them. Uh, people today don't understand that the tribulation is coming upon them. They would not repent, though God gave them time. And God is seemingly slow in our day in His coming. Why? Because He's not willing that any should perish, and He's giving man time. There was no great revival in the days of Noah. And I am not of the school that there's going to be a revival in our day. 
In fact, if anything, you could argue from the scriptures that there's going to be the antithesis of a revival and there's going to be really a falling away. Now, I do believe there's going to be a gathering uh, until the fullness of the Gentiles is complete. In other words, until that last Gentile gets saved. That, By the way, if you're here tonight and you're a Gentile, <laughs> you ain't leaving here till you, because well, I want to go home. Okay, I, that would be, could you imagine we'll, we'll show up in heaven and go, yeah, we, the last one was at Calvary Chapel, Kanye, <laughs> which will be mixed with, received with mixed response, so you held us up. <laughs> in Noah's day, they went about things as usual, eating, drinking, and marrying. In our day, it's business as usual, and people are eating, drinking, and marrying. God set in Noah's day an exact day and time where we're told in Genesis 7, 4, for yet seven days. God has set an exact day in our day and time yet for seven years there will be a tribulation. Noah... And his family go into the ark and through the great flood. The Jews will go into and through the great tribulation. Where's Enoch? Well, right before all of this, Enoch walked with the Lord. Then he was no more. Why? Because God took him away. He was caught up. He was raptured up. And he was taken away right before the tribulation, right before the uh, flood. So too, right before the tribulation, we who walk with the Lord, have a saving relationship with the Lord, won't be here. Why? We will be no more. Why? Because he's going to take us up, up and away. <laughs> okay, it doesn't quite work, but oh well. Now... I want to address something here that needs to be addressed because some will take this and create a, what they call, partial rapture theory, which means that only those obedient Christians will be raptured up and the ones who, well, are not obedient or lukewarm or, you know, uh, they will be left uh, behind. I'll tell you why that has problems. Here's the short answer and why I don't think you can support it in the scriptures. Uh, the rapture is a work of God's grace, not works. If you're walking with the Lord here today, you will be raptured up, caught up like Enoch was. If you subscribe to a partial rapture theory, you insert the unthinkable, and that is salvation by works. All of a sudden now, the onus is on me, and that's not scriptural. Okay, we're going to close. Uh, if you could just bear with me, I'm going to have to move a little bit faster here because I want to draw your attention to the book of Revelation. This cinches it for me, okay? The book of Revelation for me is enough. It's all I need to believe that the rapture has to take place before the seven year tribulation. Here's why. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 19, John, there on the island of Patmos, the year approximately 95 AD, is told to write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. In the Greek, metatauta, or after these things, yet future. In other words, John is given a divine outline for the book of Revelation. And if you study the book of Revelation, you'll find that it is broken up into three sections, past, present, future. Now, what's so significant about that? Well, what's so significant about that is that verse 4, chapter 4, verse 1, is the rapture of the church. And you have this divine outline, and I'll give you a thumbnail sketch of it real quickly. Past is chapter 1. 
What's past? Jesus Christ crucified, buried, and resurrected.